about applications related to statistics. Now, when speaking about this system, we must remember that we are not, uh, we statisticians are not alone in this world, but uh, this is surrounded by many other interesting things. And also we must uh, have some kind of communication with other uh, areas of human interest. Therefore, I have a feeling, I have had a long time a feeling that, that uh, also in, in statistical packages, we should have, have good connections to all those other things uh, we need in our daily work. And uh, now I take my start so that uh, you, you'll have already, I hope, uh, a draft for a paper which has the same title uh, which is displayed here. And now I start by showing how this paper has been produced. And then I go more into the details. Uh, it contains this paper some examples of how we are using this system and uh, I shall clip from my text certain examples and then make computations and show how we are using this system in those applications. Uh, in this first display, I simply, uh, I'm working in an edit field, which is a f very free area in the memory of the computer. And in this area, I can type text on any line. I can make computations. And uh, even write an article or paper, uh, which then I can print out on paper by a print operation written uh, on certain line. And uh, one of the main areas of this system is that we can produce the documents of it uh, by the system itself. I have here a folder containing some examples how this system can produce rather nice outputs and uh, let it uh, go through the audience, you can see what we can do. But here I just uh, emphasize that uh, when we are taking a paper on the printer, we are using a print operation telling the lines which should be printed. There are some technical things telling about the style we are using in printing. This can be defined by the user itself, himself. And then comes the title, and then there are references to various chapters uh, included in the paper. I go to the first chapter, insert a file given. Also here I can load this chapter to this edit field, and uh, then I can, of course, uh, continue editing of my, my paper. Uh, or I can use this as a certain hypertext uh, environment so that uh, when I have an interesting term, I can activate it and I get information about this word. The system includes uh, in a very extensive help system devoted to the technical details of the system. But this can be replaced as well, for instance, by a statistical help system uh, useful, for instance, in teaching. I'm now using just the, the technical um, help system here, and uh, there are options I can select, I can go to have more information about uh, Survo, 
and, that, and that, then it gives a list of various areas we are working with. For instance, if we, if we want to know about statistical data analysis, I select the item I there, and I get a list of various forms of statistical analysis we have available. Whenever I press enter, I am back in my, my text, and I can go to the, uh, some other terms like PostScript there. PostScript is a very essential part in making those uh, documents. Uh, we are trying to support uh, PostScript printers as uh, thoroughly as possible. And uh, all those documents uh, in my folder are produced uh, on either black and white PostScript printer or color PostScript printer. Now I think it's not time to, to go to these kind of details anymore. I come back from this keyword and uh, perhaps uh, it's time to go to the uh, statistical examples. Uh, uh, I select uh, not the second next uh, field but the third one where we have things related to cluster analysis. Here I can ask by using the word cluster what Surva knows about this word and it tells about the special cluster operation which performs cluster analysis. And uh, here a, sp a special algorithm made by Pekka Korhonen in his doctoral dissertation the name is here, in uh, 1979, which is a stepwise algorithm using the well-known Wilkes Lambda criteria. And uh, I think it's a remarkable breakthrough in uh, using of this uh, criteria in, in cluster analysis because, because it's very difficult to compute uh, in stepwise uh, uh, procedures when we have to compute it uh, hundreds of thousands of times in one uh, run related to cluster analysis. Uh, Korhonen uh, developed uh, a special alg algorithm which is very efficient in this, this respect. I'm going to use it uh, in my example. Now I come back from this uh, explanation and I have the listing, what I have done, and what is also in, in the paper you have here. And now I can uh, uh, take, for instance, this line off and then delete uh, some columns which are not uh, just for presentation. So, and then I can also delete lines so that I have uh, this in a correct position. There are some highlighted uh, lines for various uh, operations and commands uh, to be used when uh, repeating this experiment, but I take these highlights away because um, they are not essential. We can have them if we like, but but this uh, tells more about the normal situation than when we are working. I also scratch uh, the remaining text and there we have the pure example, which could now be saved in a specific file cluster by, by activating this. Now it says that this kind of uh, 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 file already exists, uh, so I uh, select another name, cluster 2, and I'm safe that I'm spoil not spoiling anything previously created. Now my ta uh, task here is to, to create uh, a sample of uh, a mixture of two bivariate normal distributions. I first create a file for this purpose, and then I have here a special var operation to create or to compute two variables x and y to this 
file end two. And they are defined on the successive lines here. And uh, when the order of the observations is below 51, we select x1 and x2 here, uh, and similarly for y. And now you can see that x1 and y1 are defined uh, uh, by means of certain z variables, uh, which are on, on this line. Um, this probit function is simply the inverse distribution function of norm, standard normal distribution. And when taking this with the random uh, uniform random uh, argument, we get, of course, standard normal deviates. And we are generating Z1 and Z2 in the same way. And then we produce X1 and Y1 as, the linear, as linear combinations of these Z variables, introducing certain correlation 0 0.8 by, by, by these formulas here. And then the next, uh, or the second part of the sample, in order to make it heterogeneous, we add a constant 2 to Z1 in order to have some separation between the groups. Now, when I activate this var operation, it generates uh, exactly 100 observations. Um, as long as I remember, I generate also certain auxiliary variables for clustering. But already now, before making the cluster analysis, I can plot the uh, initial situation in my data set. You see that it is a rather simple case because there is a big gap between two, two samples now put together. But we start with this. And uh, go back to those lines where we have things related to cluster analysis. In fact, I already had the results here, but I erase them. And activate this cluster operation. Here, um, I cannot go to each detail, but this mask just tells the roles of those five variables included. We have two variables, x and y. and now, uh, as the input variables or variables to be investigated. And then we have three G variables. And these are used for output so that we can store the indices of groups, uh, the results of cluster analysis in those variables. Then these trials equals to 10 means that we are going to do the stepwise procedure 10 times. Because now we are using randomized uh, initial values for groupings. And then there are stepwise procedure which tries to optimize the Wix lambda criteria. Uh, then it depends how the cases are distributed in, in the beginning. And we can have different solutions in different uh, simulations or different trials. Uh, we also say that the number of groups expected is two, and this is uh, it's just seed value from, for the random number generator, in, uh, which uh, generates the initial groupings. Now, when I activate this, it starts reading the data, orthogonalizing it, and then it's, uh, th there's the first round for, for cluster analysis, and there are all the shifts between groups uh, uh, told in this display. If I want, I can stop this for a while and study the current situation. I can also continue. For instance, in this stage, uh, we, uh, we have made four iterations. And we have found uh, uh, <coughs> three times a solution with value 0 0.149 and so on, and a better uh, solution once uh, having a smaller and better uh, value for Wilkes lambda. We are still continuing until we have 10 replicates of this experiment. Now, 
now that see, see, it's this is the last one and we got in fact six times the better solution and four times the, an inferior solution here we can now plot the solution for point G1 so that we have the, the better result presented like this and of course it's an uh, ideal solution but it's also interesting to see what's the nature of the second solution so I select point G2 and activate this G plot again and you see that uh, this line technique assuming that we have uh, multinormal distributions for all the groups with the same covariance structure it's uh, due to the initial values which connects uh, this end upper and this lower end leads a typical solution where we have split the groups in this way and this of course this is not a, a good solution but uh, it's natural in this kind of algorithm that this kind of things happen i can continue this experiment by repeating the generation of the data uh, making the the things more difficult so that instead of two we have only one as the gap between the groups and then when we of course we can now try to plot the situation uh, it's using the old uh, G2 you see that they are come closer what's the solution in this case I just activate this cluster again and it's again making those 10 trials and uh, now you see already now that there is a third alternative also coming what's the nature of this this solution and are we still getting the ideal or the right solution still one repetition and now we had a solution here we have three of the best solution two of this kind and five of this kind so if we take point G1 we obviously get the good solution again but if we take G2 I also make a provision that uh, I have the possibility to see this picture later and compare it to others so I activate this with G2 and see that it uh, has a very similar structure as before and now what's the nature of G Free. I save also this picture and now it's perhaps difficult to detect the difference because it's not so so great so when I have these two files available I can use a special gplot operation with file g2 G3 and I still add one parameter let's say I try 200 in this way we get them simultaneously and now it's linking between those two solutions so that you can see that there is it's very delicate delicate uh, difference it's not uh, and very easy to understand again that, uh, that this kind of things can happen this this kind of application of this kind of algorithm so we either need good initial values in this kind of approach or 
we must do several random starts in order to get the right solution, whatever it is. <coughs> I stop now presentation of this example and go to another type of, of usage of, of, of the system. I go to the third example in my uh, paper and it can be found from this kind of file. Now I have to explain what is a sucro. Uh, it's a, a special term used in connection with surovo. In, in, in a way it's related to macro and uh, in a way it's a a, a, a thing related to the technique of survo. Therefore, I have used uh, a special word for, for this concept because uh, it's somewhat different of the macros. It's more gen general than macros in, in, in other statistical systems or, or programming languages uh, and so on. Of course, we can use the, the inquiry system and ask what is sucro and uh, it gives some general statements and uh, it gives information how we can generate sucrose and so on. I try to give an example now related to factor analysis. I have of course those displays already, but I try before using them, I try to repeat the experiment from scratch. The idea is now to work with a a given data file, <coughs> I'm using a special data file called DECA and the current status tells about the active variables. This is related to sports, it's a decathlon. We have the 10 events of decathlon and we, are, we have actually 84 competitors, their best results for a certain year in points uh, or scores, and we like to make a factor analysis of these 10 variables. Now I scratch this and uh, <coughs> show first, uh, just by example, how to make factor analysis with Survo. But at the same time, I try to save all the actions in a special sucro file so that these actions can be later repeated and also edited to a more general form. And my aim, as you can see from my paper, is to generate a, 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 more, a smarter way of solving factor analysis problems for those who are not familiar with all technical things. And for instance, I, my aim is to, to find a correct number for factors without giving it uh, exactly when starting the final operation. But uh, let's assume that we don't have this, this, this solution yet and we, we should start it, uh, making it. I start by pressing certain uh, keys uh, and now I'm using, I was using the name factor in my, in my paper. Not to spoil this, I, I use a shorter name fact for this sucro I'm going to generate. I take a new line and start by computing correlations from the DECA file for all active variables. When I activate this, it is going through the observations and gives the, a display of the results, but everything vanishes. They are, the results are not taken in the edit field. They could have been taken, but, but in this case, they are only in special matrix files. And uh, we are interested, of course, about correlations in this case. I can load uh, or I have their the correlation matrix, and now I, I want to see, see the structure of the correlation matrix. 
I want to have the eigenvalues, the characteristic values of correlation matrix. Therefore, I make spectral decomposition. I could abbreviate this word, but of uh, this is the name of the standard correlation matrix after the, the core operation. And now we are getting the eigenvectors and putting them as a, to matrix file S, and then we get uh, L a vector of uh, uh, eigenvalues. And now I, for the first time, want to see some results. I take the matrix L into the edit field. And now I have the possibility to study these eigenvalues. And uh, we can go now step by step downwards and see where the number of uh, where the, the eigenvalues goes below one and uh, make the decision that that's the correct point to break. So for instance, in this case, four should be the right number for, for factors. And therefore, I go back to this stage and uh, simply erase this line and scratch the whole thing onwards and then start by using factor operation for this uh, correlation matrix using four factors. And now this uh, maximum likelihood solution coming according to the well-known algorithm made by, developed by KG Jöres group. And again, we have no results in the edit field. We are not at the moment interested about this primary result. But uh, now we are going to rotate uh, the results. And we know again that we have those, uh, the factor matrix in fact dash m um, file. And we rotate with four factors. And default technique here is uh, um, the Varimax rotation. I'm sorry, I forgot to add uh, the line for the results. Uh, of course, I can do that again by putting, for instance, cursor line plus one there and get uh, the new result here. And, and let's assume that this is all we want to do in the first place. I'll now stop definition of the sucro. And we can immediately see what we have achieved. We can use a tootload operation for our fact sucro. And then we have a listing telling about the actions I have made with this, uh, in this comp computation, in this uh, stepwise computation for factor analysis. There are <laughs> plain text, uh, those uh, operations, for instance, activated. But there are also technical terms in braces. And for, uh, for instance, this act uh, in braces means activation of uh, operation. Capital R in braces means uh, enter key, taking a new line, and so on. It's rather easy to learn how to use it. And now, for instance, I can correct my, my error here. For instance, I, there I forgot to put the line for the results uh, in the beginning. But I can easily remove this act um, and put these together. And now it's, it should work. I can now also generalize this in different ways. And for instance, if I want to use any data set instead of DECA, I can replace this with a parameter. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. 
W1 is always the first parameter in a circular operation. Uh, I haven't time to do all the uh, all the races in order to achieve the final solution. I I made only this one, and when I uh, say, for instance, this, I have uh, this operation available for any data. For instance, I can use some other data set. Let's say test four. But now, because I have no that kind of data set, if this didn't work, I should uh, uh, use something existing data set and, and, uh, and so on. Now, the main point in my approach, however, is to show that we can make this uh, sucro uh, like a small uh, expert system, which helps uh, those users who do not know about how to determine the correct number of factors. I have no time to do the programming. I just uh, show by loading the factor sucro in its final form. And now you can see that these things from about this step to this are telling about those conditional things. And now, for instance, I can use uh, this uh, final sucro, which also determines the correct uh, number of factors for any data set. Uh, uh, I make another small experiment with a ready-made sucro, which generates a suitable data for us. Uh, therefore, I return to the start of the system I select certain ready-made tutorials which have been made by the Sucro technique. And there is one related to famous Thurston's box problem. I am not going through the whole solution of this problem. I only watch until we have the data ready. And uh, then I go back to the factor sucro in order to have an automatic solution for our problem. I uh, think that uh, most of you know about this classical problem. We think that we have a sample of boxes with dimensions x, y, and z. But we cannot measure those boxes directly. Instead, we have some derived measurements like volume and, and surface area or uh, various uh, um, other measurements uh, from corner to corner and so, on, so, and so on. Now, in this experiment, we generate again an, uh, a data set uh, now called box. And we start by wire operation, generating now three variables, which are uh, uniformly distributed um, on a certain interval, and uh, from 10 to 20. And we can see the uh, correlations uh, of those initial variables. But these are now forgotten, and we try to operate with the derived variables so that we are generating different functions of those original variables. And we have also additive error terms with different variances uh, included. Here are about 10 first variables generated. We are generating altogether 18 new variables. And, uh, here comes the next set of uh, six variables. The two last ones, uh, the last one is just the volume and, and then there are certain diagonals, for instance. The, the, the largest diagonal is also computed, but all with error terms so that uh,
Now, I'm not going to follow this sucro anymore. I have the data set already. I am go, go back to um, my uh, earlier work. And now I activate the final version of this tiny factor sucro so that it's working with the box data. Activate it, it computes the correlations. This could be speeded up, but uh, on purpose I, I keep the tempo rather slow so that you can see. And for instance here, now it's examining the eigenvalues. There's a first eigenvalue, now the second accepted, now the third accepted, but the fourth is not accepted. And therefore, it's computing only with three factors. Now it's taking more time for the actual factor analysis because uh, we have more variables, 18 altogether. But here is the r result. And now we are rotating, and we get the final solution. And uh, I think it's uh, rather easy to detect that uh, this F1 just corresponds to x dimension, F2 corresponds to y dimension, and this to z dimension. And from the names of the variables, you can see what uh, uh, or what basic dimensions are involved uh, so that, for instance, in the volume, the loadings are equally distributed between factors, which is very natural, so with the uh, main diagonal and so on. So that it's very assuring proof that uh, in the practice that uh, whenever the data is following the normal factor model, the good methods of factor analysis can detect the, the factors, actually. But only after rotation. I think uh, uh, I have to give the possibility for Simo to speak also, but uh, perhaps I have still time yes, to, yes, yes. To, to do something with the matrix interpreter um, in order to show that the rotation was very essential to ach in achieving this result. For instance, um, now uh, we have actually the, the original factor solution in a certain file called fact m. And I'm using a special chain of matrix operation in order to have also the sum of squares by col columns and, and and lines so that we have the commonalities there as the last column and then we have the sums of, sums of squares of, of columns indicated which um, of course uh, correspond to eigenvalues and we see that in the original solution without rotation we have a very uneven distribution of, of the probability mass uh, among these factors uh, the first is very strong compared to the second and third. And also when trying to, uh, to interpret these results, it's not easy to see the real solution. If this is now replaced by the result of, of a rotated matrix and repeat it again, <coughs> There's a series of matrix operations be behind this. We see that now the factors are of equal weight. And it also assures that, that we have found a good solution. Oh, I could uh, continue with the other examples, but I think that now it's 
better to change the speaker and I hope that Simo can now tell about his experiences of using Survo in, in teaching of statistics. Thank you. 